This is a HeadGum Original. In 1977, NASA sent two solid gold records into space so that aliens might find them and understand life on Earth. I send greetings on behalf of the people of our planet and friendly wishes to all who may encounter this voyager. Now, we're making new records with our friends. We step out of our solar system into the universe seeking only peace and friendship. We know full well that our planet and all its inhabitants are but a small part of this immense universe that surrounds us. Hello from the children of planet Earth. Shelby. Before we get into this, I want to address one single uh, commenter, I think it was, which is someone who said the least we could have done was have Mike on the podcast. Yeah. Well. We're trying. He's going to come on the podcast. We're trying. He, we couldn't make it work when we, it, it is not, someone said the least we, I was like. Where did they comment this? It was on something. I think it was on. Do you know what I love about us is that we get, we get legitimately, and I'm not making this up. We get legitimately so many nice comments and messages about this podcast, and on every single episode, we bring up like the one bad the one. one bad thing that someone has said. Like one one person will, and it's never even that bad. One person will comment like, "Oh man, I wish the ads were a little bit shorter," and we'll do like ten minutes being like, "Let us tell you guys something <laughs> <laughs> about ads." I mean, yeah, it's like just like just literally, literally talking about the good stuff. We we love well, our good comments. The reason I'm bringing it up. The reason I'm bringing it up. <laughs> Is because I want people to know that we do love Mike, and we it is a, not a personal attack that we didn't have him on. No, we do love Mike. I mean, do we? Do I have a lot of resentment towards Mike for leaving the podcast? Yes, a hundred percent. Do I? Do I wish him well? Mm, you know, I, I I wish him as a guest on the pod. I wouldn't that's a, that's to the say, most yeah, that I, I wish him. What he did leave us with is a childhood friend as our new producer. What he did leave us with is our our closest. Newest friend in the world, Anya, who you guys should start sh- showing to... some love to in the comments. Yeah, Jesus Christ. Yeah. They met at a Republican National Convention where <laughs> Anya was speaking. Um, and that's She beautiful. was the youngest speaker, still is, still the youngest is. speaker ever yes. to, to speak at an RNC. Yeah. She, she was there speaking. She was, doing a, she was doing a panel called Guns. Let's see more. It of was them. guns. It was <laughs> sorry. And Anya, Anya, you can Anya, you can chime in if you, if I'm getting this wrong. But it was guns. And what rights can we take away from people? Yeah, it was it was guns and who shouldn't have rights. That was the panel, and it was very it was tasteful. I thought it was beautiful. I was there. Yeah, I, I went. watched a video of it. We it has weird uh, video quality because it was so long ago. Mm. Um, but it's good. It was really not. I mean, well for for the age that she was. 12. 12. Really well thought out. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty specific. Shelby, how are you? <laughs> thriving. Thriving. <laughs> she's a thriving, even. And she's a thriving. She a thrive. She's a thriving. Um, good. I'm glad to hear that. How are you? <laughs> I'm really, really good. Everything's awesome. Um, yeah. Co- like, career perfect. Love life perfect. Family wouldn't change a single thing. Um, yeah, I do have to say, when it comes to family right now, I would keep everything exactly yes. as is and preserve it in amber yes. for the rest of my life. When it comes to family stuff right now, and I think I speak for you as well as for me, there isn't a change that could be made. You know, it's right. everyone right. is exactly how they should be. And <laughs> <laughs> and I, I feel blessed is the only word. Um, no, I think it's good. I think every time I talk to people that I'm related to now – I think the feed the the conversation is about good stuff, and we feel good about it at the end. Yeah, and I would say, um, you know, if you hear me talking about like exercising a lot lately or buying a Jeep Wrangler, those things are healthy and they're normal and they're based on nothing. And it's about, and it's actually about when you are at your happiest. Yeah, which we are, which we are at our best and happiest. <laughs> Then you get to have little fun things going on. Yeah, you get to obsess over buying a Jeep Wrangler when you're in a healthy headspace. When you're the happiest you ever are. (laughs) When you're the happiest you've ever been, you get to do these kind of things. You get to have a little manic. You get to have half a chicken breast for dinner. 
That's something you get to do when you're at the happiest because you've ever been. Because it's about being that happy that you don't need others. Like that's all that it, you just get to. You got to, and that's beautiful. When you have everything going really well, then sometimes it's like, well, what else good can I have? A Jeep Wrangler, I guess. I guess maybe a Jeep Wrangler. Maybe a Jeep Wrangler. The Jeep Wrangler doesn't need to fix any problems because I don't oh, have any problems. You've seen a sad person in a Jeep Wrangler. Get r- fucking real. Get fucking real, you fucking goofball. I'm waging war on goofballs. Cut it out. Stop being so Got fucking it. goofy. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, bounce, wearing bright colored shirts. Stop it. You know, it's just too goofy. People have gotten too goofy. <laughs> stop. <My hand> was, <laughs> stop. Riding bicycles. Get some help. Stop. Oh, don't There's get me started. There's a fly that will not stop. <sighs> Are you going to be okay? <laughs> you, see, you do like five minutes on how good you are and then you start crying because there's a fly. Please. Do you want me to talk about bicyclists? I'm always ready to. <laughs> I'm so sick of these people. Bicyclists, get, you know, get off your fucking, oh, you ride a bike. Okay. Oh, the city isn't laid out for me. Yeah, because people are in cars because we're normal. Stop. <laughs> Stop. Stop. Oh, I have to lock my bike I up. Do think, Shut up. I do think... <laughs> I do think people who bike cyclists should live uh, in another city. <laughs> I think this city is Portland. actively set up to be different for oh, for uh, people. LA is hard for a bicyclist. Yeah, it's like eighteen hundred miles that on around. Purpose. Yeah. Oh my god, I can't. I, look, here's the deal. Do I think the roads should be more accommodating to bicyclists? I don't care. Sure. I, I, I'm tired of these people. They won't stop. They're always complaining. Always something to complain about with these people. Have a nice day. Hey, you ever had a nice day? You ever just ridden your bicycle and been been quiet about it? People in Chicago <laughs> do biking correct, which is what they do is they go to the lake and they just bike near go the, to lake. the lake. They bike near the lake and they never talk to me about urban planning. And I think and that's it's beautiful. because it's cold there. The problem is that the weather's nice here. So people are like, I can bike here all year round. And what they're forgetting is the mountains, the hills, the mountains. Yeah. The traffic, oh, and they always even. bicyclists always too. They always want to bring up some town in Spain to me. They're always like, "Oh, in Spain, there's a city where I don't live there, and I don't care if you want to if you want to bike if you want to bicycle down to the baguette store, you're gonna have to move to France. I don't know what to tell you. I do you. like a bike ride though. I will say, oh, I love that. a bike ride. I'd love to be a bicyclist. I'm speaking purely I from a place of jealousy and hatred. Yeah, well, I'm yeah, I'm I'm I really just wanted to have an opinion on something, so I decided to go in on bicyclists. This you could sub out bicyclists for anything right now. I could be talking about. <laughs> children children oh what no what is the deal with children <laughs> grow up you've seen this you heard about this <laughs> grow up got kids. you're a kid grow up you got kids now <laughs> i will say no i can't say that um my niece she's not really related to me but you know the deal there i'm just you know the listeners don't mm. um i was on the phone yesterday with her and she i she just had a birthday Happy birthday. And she was like, I turned 12. And I was like, no, you did not. No, you can't have. But she was so convincing, eerily convincing, that I was like, is she 12? And then she, I said, I don't think you're 12. She goes, no, I turned nine. And I said, that still feels wrong. But she just lied. So she's surely telling the truth now. She turned seven. The girl turned seven. Please, please, please. She lied left and right, up and down. She's a sociopath. What are you going to do about that? Well, I don't know. <laughs> so I don't think it's in my purview. So I'm just sort of like, I guess I know a tiny sociopath mm. and hopefully her crimes are tiny. Here's something else I'm sick of. Restaurants offering a side salad with your meal and then not putting their heart into it. If you're going <laughs> to... You're going to make a side salad part of the meal and you're going to put that that lettuce mixture that has like little slices of car- carrots in it. Yeah. And you're going to put a little bit of Italian dressing from like from from Vons on it. I'll say this. You don't want to do Italian a side dressing. salad. I don't Fuck like Italian, Italian dressing. dressing. Fuck Italian dressing. Fuck Italian dressing. Give me something interesting on a salad or give me ranch. You can give me ranch or you can give me something interesting. you can give me like it, something – you know, you got pomegranate molasses in an oil with a vinegar in there. And I say, that sounds good. If you're offering a side salad, let's just put our heart into it a little bit. Let's have some pride in our craft. <laughs> let's put some pussy in it. Let's put. Wait, the other night, 
the other night when I went out, I I actually someone actually asked me to stop yelling this. I kept yelling, "I'm gonna eat pussy and drive drunk tonight." I, I couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't stop saying, "I'm gonna eat pussy and drive drunk." I which. By the way, two things Caleb won't do. Hey, two things I've done before, and neither of them was for me. <laughs> uh, Who was the driving drunk for? Driving drunk? Oh no, I'm Who saying was it just for? wasn't for me. It's like not my. It's not filling my cup. Eating pussy. Uh, I thought you meant I was doing it. <laughs> as in like I was doing that for her. Eating pussy. <laughs> that was not Ugh. for me. Eating pussy. No, I'm sure she wasn't liking it either. Eating pussy. Yuck. Don't understand it. Don't get the draw. Driving drunk, I get because you don't want to leave your car. <laughs> I totally get it. I totally get driving drunk. If you're good at it, you should be able to do it. But yeah, I, I haven't. No. I, if you're good at, I think if you're good for at both, Anya's saying you should be able to do both, but only if you're good yeah, at it. You should be able, you should to, be able to drive drunk and eat pussy. You should be able to eat pussy if you're good at it and drive drunk if you're good at it. Both things should be legal. I've always. And said. if you're bad at either, stay at home. If you're if you're bad at eating pussy. Well, that's fine. We're- right? <laughs> There's other stuff. <laughs> I, I, hey, no one loves the female orgasm more than me, folks. my stomach to even say I don't <laughs> show me I have to revise this podcast <laughs> contract I have to opt out I have to opt out I have to opt out I have to opt no out. you're contractually obligated to be on the pod and that's why I do it is the contract oh my god no I don't care I don't I'm care. still kind of um, yeah. having a reaction well do you think I like saying it I don't actually care about the female <laughs> orgasm I mean politically right, well, I do but up. in practice yeah, I'm okay, like there you go. politically I think it's important but in, in day to day, I don't want to be, in, you know, I don't want to be like boots on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> and driving drunk, I actually was good at <laughs> when I did it. Nobody drive drunk unless you're good at it. That's fair. Uh, <laughs> I'm good at, oh no, I shouldn't say that. I don't want to speak on it. <laughs> I haven't, I, I drove drunk when I was like, ever, everyone drove drunk when they were 18, right? I was driving drunk a lot in high school, and I don't think that that was the correct move, but it was what I was up to. I lived so far from all my friends, and we like to drink. Yeah. Well, and I understand I understand why people do it. I just No one should do it. No one's good at it. I'm just now saying. Now you have Uber. What I have to say is that I did not have another option besides to call my mom and say I'm drunk and get grounded. Well, but also think about this. You leave your car in Highland Park. The next day you have to go find it. Isn't that kind of annoying? Sure. <laughs> don't i mean come on that's a little uh-huh. annoying no you're right we didn't have uber and we were all getting drunk in like fields and so my my what i'm saying is i was wrong then mm. but now nobody has even an excuse um yeah well i was valid then i was valid then i was infinite <laughs> i swear and in uh, that moment i swear we were infinite when i was infinite. driving drunk God, can you believe that there was a time in my life where I was like, I want that as a tattoo. Yes, I can't believe that because I almost got a tattoo of my fraternity's letters on my ankle when I was in college. <clears throat> so, yep. Yeah. <laughs> I think, Yippers. I do think it, the one thing that I think, you know, like I know we have age restrictions on a lot of stuff. I think the age restriction on tattoos is 100% correct. If I was able to get a tattoo at like 14, 15, I would have gotten one of my bunk at summer camp. <laughs> I would have been like Apes 09. That'd be Ugh. awesome though. You still talk about that. Yeah, I think the Apes 09 of it all would be like kind of like, okay, girl, get a grip. <laughs> hey, I'm really, really excited about our guest today, Shelby. I'm actually pretty excited too, if I can say that, if it's illegal. She is a writer for Ted Lasso, extremely popular television program from Apple. Also the Amber Ruffin show. Also, uh, you know her from a Black Lady sketch show, which she not only writes on, but also... Stars. Stars. Can you believe that? Our guest today is absolute icon genius and all around icon. Ashley Nicole Black. (laughs) No, I'm kidding. It's too quiet. Ashley Nicole Black! Black! Ashley, hi. Hi. Ashley, hi. (laughs) This is so, I'm so excited that you're here. Me too. I've been waiting for this all day. (laughs) 
<laughs> oh my god, you look stunning. Uh, yeah, before the record is... started, we were we were really fawning, and I I want the listeners to hear that that that's happening <laughs> that so they, they can engage. Yeah, yeah I would also it. like to say that I don't just sit around like this. <laughs> no, I believe <laughs> no, that you do. Keep it, 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 keep it. I had to sign onto a table read the other day as a writer, just a writer, and yeah. I'm like, it. I had come from something else, so I'm in a full face. I'm like, these actors think I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm addicted. The actors are like, oh, okay, lip. she's coming for she's our glam. job. She's, <laughs> she's coming for our job. She wants to act on the on the show. Clearly. Um, Actually, where uh, where are you from? I don't think I know where you're from. I grew up here in L.A. You're from L.A.? Yeah. Oh, that's so rare, I feel. One of the few. Yeah. Woo! When I was a kid, I remember we had to do this project, and they're like, write about where your parents are from. And I was like, L.A. And they were like, no, 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 sweetie. Where are they from? And I was like, no, they're from here. We're from, from here. <laughs> <laughs> we're all from, from here. Up here. <laughs> Damn. So your parents are from here, too. Uh, were their par- like, are you, how many generations in are you? Do you know? Just them, yeah. My grandparents, of course, came from the South, but they there was like a movement where there was like a big like church revival here and a bunch oh, of yeah. black people moved to LA um, kind of at the same time. So everybody knows each other and like literally like I'll go on set and like some of the transpo people go to church with my parents. I like, I have to be nice all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You never get a day. You're you never, never get a day. You a day. never get to have a bad day. <laughs> Dad could get a phone call at any moment. <laughs> Damn, that's so sick. Are do you do you still live like are you, your parents are still in LA? I'm assuming. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And do you live kind of close to them or no? I live like well, what should be 45 minutes away from What's them. What's your address? But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> What's both of your addresses? Your parents and then your. <laughs> yeah, while we're at it. Quest it. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I think it's quest. a go. I know. <laughs> Remember that. <laughs> Remember Dur- printing out a full map quest? Oh my printing God. out directions. And then like getting halfway there and realizing you didn't have a page and you were just You nowhere. took a wrong turn and now you're like, and how do I get back? Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I go home. Yeah. <laughs> you Actually, actually, you might know the answer to this. And um, if you do and you're like, I don't want to give it away, that's fine too. But I, I really... <laughs> I really have been trying to go dancing in LA. What do, what do people dance here? Where do people dance in this city? Oh, I feel like I don't know the answer to that. I was like, uh, we guys, get out. ready for a name drop. I was uh, I, hanging out with Matt McCory, and he was like, <laughs> <laughs> he was like, oh yeah. God, I'm going dancing, and I was literally like, where? Tell me where. And it came off creepy, but I was just like, no, I would like to dance, and I don't know where people go dancing here, but I think I kind of scared him away. <laughs> I he was like, I that. am trying to have a night. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to have one night. And she was like, tell me where. Tell me where you dance now. Just tell me where and what time. <laughs> Can I come? Can I roll up alone? I think I'm going to have to throw a big, I think I'm just going to have to throw a big dance party and invite all my friends. That's what it's going to have to come down to, I think. The people need. I What's like interesting just, about yeah. Caleb's new desperation to go dancing is that it's not something he does often really generally it's like Mm. he has a craving and he's like now i need to know where people dance in la but i don't think i think you maybe went dancing what twice in chicago okay ashley you might relate to this i am uh going through an extremely manic period right now because i just wrapped a writer's room and i have free time again and i'm like let's go i'm gonna get a tattoo yeah (laughs) I'm always like, I need to work out every day. And it's like, you, you don't. That's not your lifestyle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you've just been like sitting and talking for months. I also feel like with COVID, like an opportunity to dance would come up every now and then. I would maybe dance twice a year. But then when it's not happening, you're like, I got to make it happen. I got I to gotta go get somewhere. the day. I, I, I got to dance get, every night. Yeah. I've got to I've gotta boogie and I've got to move. I got to boogie and move. Uh, actually, we... We brought you here for a really important reason. We want to ask you if you were making your own golden record, uh, what would you put on it? Well, this is actually a perfect segue right on theme because my first one is day drinking outside. I think. Thank you. <laughs> Let's go. What are you drinking out there? I mean, well, if you're outside, you're definitely a rosé, a white wine, you know, something mm. crisp and light, something you could continue to drink all day. Because the thing about day drinking is, like, once you start, that's your day. You cannot stop. That's your day. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're then, drunk like, now. When you go out at night, you, like, go out for two hours, and then you're like, okay, we did it. We're going. If When you start drinking in the daytime, that's what the day is for. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And that's, like, one of the biggest things I miss. <laughs> There's there's also such an immediate crash if you stop. Like there's yes. a, if you stop 4 p.m., you have to go to sleep by 4:30. Like yeah. you can't. There's no like 
And then you have to try and rally. But no, anybody, anytime I've ever been like, we are going to drink all day and then we're going to go out later. Or no, even like, we're going to go to dinner no, later. You're not. It's like, <laughs> no, babe. You're not. You're going no, to you're sleep. not. <laughs> you're going to sleep. You you're are gonna... at best going to order pizza and eat it in your house. At, at best. best. Maximum. <laughs> Maximum there's pizza at the house. I, I feel like, Ashley, I kind of feel like, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, I kind of feel like you're amazing at brunch. Do you love, are you like a, a great brunch guest? I am. Yeah. <laughs> I am. Because here's what, I can be so drunk and people will be like, oh man, I was messed up last night. I probably owe you an apology. And I was like, oh, I was so far beyond you, but it just, I don't come <laughs> off messy. So yeah. I can really go all day because I don't get messy. <laughs> She's put together, folks. Yeah. <laughs> Keeping it keeping it contained with the even you if you had like first. You she's better than first. us. She's better than us. Better, than, better at, at being drunk. She's definitely better than Caleb. She's definitely better at drinking okay. than Caleb. Hey, Ashley, make her stop. That Caleb, we I, we might have talked about this in the last episode. In which case, we can not talk about it again. But Caleb doesn't drink enough. Ashley. to have gotten his stuff <laughs> together when he drinks. <laughs> Not Caleb, has, Caleb dr- has, only gets drunk so infrequently that when it oh. happens, he has no skills or tools Caleb, to keep himself in. You got to put in your 10,000 hours. You have Anything to you want to get Yes. <laughs> I'm not like you, you, Ashley. How did you escape Chicago? Because I feel like Chicago is such a drinking city. Like, that's really the city where I learned how to Thrived. drink. <laughs> Chicago, dr- Chicago drinking felt a little sad though, no? <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> like people like downing Malort in like a tiny bar in like the middle of winter. Chicago I was like, drinking I'm was not. like, we need to keep warm. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah. It's like, like survival. Sh- Chicago drinking, yeah, has has a real like middle of nowhere, cold, trying to just get through the night kind of vibe. Yeah, like you don't know what it is until you're like reflected back to yourself. And I remember my dad came to visit one time and we were walking through Old Town and like Every bouncer at every bar was like, hey, Ashley, what's up? Blah, blah, blah. Like every bar we passed, <laughs> like first and last name. Hey, girl, how's it going with that guy? You're like, and my dad was like, what? How do you know all these guys? Your dad was like, you're coming home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's enough. I've seen enough. <laughs> Wait, uh, Ashley, I when you said when you said day drinking outside, I immediately thought of – a, a, a time I lived in New York for two summers in college and there was one, one I specifically my brain went the time you got day drunk in Manhattan your phone died and you got lost is there a is there a when you say that is there a day drinking outside event that you think of oh like I memory? think of like when I was in college this to me is like a perfect day when mm. I was in college we would go to Safeway Thank and you. like a sandwich is five dollars and a bottle of wine was five dollars <laughs> So for ten dollars, yeah, <laughs> you can, like go get a subway sandwich, a bottle of wine, and then just sit out on the beach and just like drink and chat all day. And oh my those God. are just like the best days where you're just like hot and you just get into like the real shit. Cause no one's drunk, but you're like drinking enough that you can finally be like, that guy sucks. Like, please stop dating him. Let's just <laughs> really talk about it right now. That and made just, me want to cry. When you were describing that, I was like, I'm going to cry. That's so beautiful. Those are my favorite <laughs> so, days. You're so broke too. You're like a $5 sandwich is actually kind of life changing. <laughs> yeah. You're like, this is the best life could be is I've, I could like have a whole day for $10 and just sit around and talk that's so beautiful are do you do you where did you go did you go to school in LA I went to UC Santa Cruz Santa Cruz thank you go banana slugs I was gonna say is that the banana slugs (laughs) oh my god I need a shirt they're so cool (laughs) they're so great well I guess like somebody wore the shirt in Pulp Fiction so they're like still selling those shirts today (laughs) yeah John Travolta in in Pulp yeah they're the banana slugs Mm mm-hmm it's a little yellow slug that um, is hallucinogenic. It just really says everything about the school's personality that that's the mascot. <laughs> it is so funny to imagine like that. playing a sports team and being like, yeah, we got to face the banana slugs next week. And you know how they are. They're yeah. a tough team to beat. We got destroyed yeah, by the banana slugs. Not. <laughs> yeah, can, <laughs> yeah, to be beat by the banana slugs has got to sting. It's, it's not good. It's be not like, likely. <laughs> Unless it's to be like, like an astrophysics competition, the other school wins, <laughs> Astrophysics. Oh robotics. man, that's a drag. <laughs> I've always kind of wanted to go to a robotics competition. For some we reason, should. I feel like it's fascinating. It's a weird world. Everyone's so in it. Did you guys have Odyssey of the Mind when you were kids? 
No, what is that? It's a competition. I I was like so happy when someone tweeted about it because I thought it was like a fever dream that I had had. And I was so happy that someone confirmed that it's real. It's a competition where like you're given a problem to solve and then like a box of supplies and then like a bunch of little kids have to like figure out how to solve the problem with the supplies that you have. But the problem will be something like there's not enough water in this town and the people are going to die. And you're like in seventh grade being like... <laughs> <laughs> You're right, like, oh got, my god! <laughs> we got two sticks and some robot parts. <laughs> That's and you'd insane. Have to, like, build a solution. And did you you competed in that? You said, yeah. Oh my god! But you're so good at that. Yeah, that's <laughs> I'm huge. Gonna be, I'm gonna be real with you guys. The coach was the cutest teacher in school. I'm just gonna be real. I would, please don't. Get and there a was wrong a reason impression. to join. There was yeah. a reason to join. Don't get a bad impression I... of me as a kid. I want to get back up on this, that this was unfair. In eighth grade, in science class, for the science fair, mm. every class had to, like, customize a little robot dog, okay? Except okay. for my class, Imme- which had I'm to I'm sorry, make- I just have to say, immediately I know that you went to a better school than me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, we did not go to the same school. Go ahead. Except for my class, mm. which did not get to customize a robot dog, and instead, we had to make the most complex Rube Goldberg machine <laughs> that could knock knock off like it, there was like sixty different requirements. That seems un un, un imbalanced, correct? Correct. I'm, Th- I'm sorry that I'm into that. I would do that now as an activity. Ah! <laughs> it was it was fun, but it was hard. And then like people were being like, yeah, they put together like one of those like like. Lego sets for a robot and then they were like and then I put it in a cute t-shirt and then for us I was like I built a Ferris wheel to sort marbles it was like I had to like put different sized marbles down different paths to sort them by the end and they had to hit it it was I just remember like being at science fair watching people like show their little dogs and me being like (laughs) moving this down to the to the Fair was the scariest moment of my life because I could break. And I'm then, curious. Uh, I'm curious if either of you, because Ashley, you said that you did this because the teacher was cute. I, w- when I was in Chicago, the most embarrassing thing, I think the most embarrassing thing that I, and I've done a lot of embarrassing things to get a guy's attention. The most embarrassing thing I think I've done was I pretend there was a guy that I was talking to for a second who was, um, he he like re he rebuilt motorcycles. He would like find an old motorcycle and rebuilt it. And I pretended to be so into it. I was like, oh my God, carburetor. Like I I couldn't <laughs> stop I couldn't stop asking questions oh about it. Oh my god, carburetor. Oh my god, carburetor. <laughs> Not to mention, I mean, don't even get me started on Oh my <laughs> engine, you know. Oh my god, carburetor. Oh my god, carburetor. And yeah, I I I I did some really embarrassing stuff for for guys. So I'm I'm on your team. I think my like worst moment of that was in college. This guy was like, do you want to come over and watch me play video games? And Ashley. I was like, surely this is an invitation for sex. Like surely he doesn't actually want me to watch him play video games. So I went over and this How many hours? proceeded to How play many hours? eight hours of video games. I was like, I can't. <laughs> I was like, I can't believe this is happening. <laughs> Did you make I- any moves or were you just like truly like? No, I'm just like, I, I guess this is what we're doing. Then eventually I just left and I was just like, never again. <laughs> like, Did he offer you a controller? <laughs> no. No, not allowed to play Monster. Even. Truly Monster. just like, watch well, me do this activity. <laughs> I will tell you, Ashley, I, Shelby, we might have talked about this, but I don't know. But it's definitely news to Ashley. I, the way that things ended with Motorcycle Guy was that I found his Instagram page and it was all like – like fat erotica like it was like a, I, mean, I remember mission. this it was like it was like it was like drawings he did of like fat people tied to a chair sexually <laughs> and, and and i found the instagram and i never spoke to him again i feel I like i remember a specific again. one that you sent me there was this the the one that was like because at first i saw it was like drawings of like beautiful fat people and i was like okay i mean i am fat and i am beautiful so i was like maybe and then i saw uh, he there was a drawing he did of <laughs> I mean, this is so scary. There was a drawing he did of a fat guy tied to a chair, and he was uh-huh. – uh, there was a thin guy yes. feeding him pizza, and the pizza yes. was I like – I remember this vividly. The hot pizza cheese was dripping on the guy's chest, no. and I was like, N- I will never be and, – And to be clear about the, so- the size of the drawings, it was <laughs> – 
It wasn't it was just insulting. fat thin. It wasn't just fat thin. It was like he had drawn the thin person to also be the size of a thimble. <laughs> yeah. Just so They were so like teeny little, little fairy little sprites. Fairy. Yeah. yeah. And then like the fat t- people like, were like Jabba the Hutt. Yeah. <laughs> Here's my problem. You lost me a drawing. I feel like <laughs> <laughs> if these had been pictures, I mean, it's still creepy and just like it's not okay. And the buddy, nothing stopping you from having a different Instagram name so people don't find this. Right. But like when you say drawing, you're like that meant that he spent hours. Hours hours thinking this was a good idea like at no point in moving the pencil did any part of his brain go maybe we should stop here yeah and also that we had been on like i don't know two or three dates and 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 his his idea of the most important thing about him was that he does motorcycles and i was like (laughs) no the most important thing about you is that you want to tie tie me to a chair and burn me with pizza cheese like that's you need to lead with that lead with you do need to start there you need to start yeah it's at that point, it's consent. I'm yeah. consenting to because be around there, there someone. There may be a that person can... who wants that, but you got to – I'm sure to there the is. First thing There's somebody say. who wants everything. Like, right. You need to say, by the way, my intentions here are to get you in that chair tied up and <laughs> and dripping some cheese and oil on you. And imagine how surprised I would have been when he asked if I wanted to order a pizza sometime and I said yes. <laughs> where we were going that's not fair to me i need to it's know like, now you said know. you wanted pizza you said- <laughs> now you're gonna eat this pizza <laughs> you gotta eat this pizza well, uh wait okay no, no, the pizza comes <laughs> the pizza comes i'm like ooh, yum. and you you <laughs> open the box and he says now hold uh, on one he second says, he says no 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 he said go to that chair he says you in the chair you find that kind of hot at first you go Okay. No, but there's then no he world turns where I find on that the hot. oven, and you're like, but wait, I think <laughs> it's, it's, it's not warm enough. <laughs> <laughs> he says the cheese isn't drippy enough for what we're gonna do. I said, what we're gonna do? <laughs> he I said the heard. delivery guy didn't keep this in the heating box, and I can tell. Oh my god! <laughs> I got a war- I get this has to be piping hot for what I need. So scary. Well, okay, we've officially gotten off the. Tr- but before we talk about the rest of your records, Ashley, we should uh, we should go to ads. We should go to the ads. We got bills to pay, Shelby. Welcome, Welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back. Shelby, over to you. <laughs> um, Ashley, listen. If you were to delete one thing from the record of humanity, and, and it doesn't have to be big stuff, okay? It doesn't have to be uh, sick kids or something. What would you <laughs> delete? See, now I wish I had said sick kids, but I did not. Um, (laughs) Trust me, the conversation just gets – if you say sick kids, like, what are we going to do? Be like, yeah, we do want to – like, like, what's the conversation there? It's just like, definitely, yeah, no, we all want – (laughs) so. I did need a platform to say this. I think people need to hear it. I think what we need to stop doing is backhanded compliments, Mm. specifically (laughs) the word confident. (sighs) <sighs> Ashley, I, Ashley, oh, Ashley, Ashley, you have to listen to two episodes ago. Ashley, like, Ashley, oh, go on speak, this. speak on that, speak I on that, speak on that. I to preach on today. So I posted some like very hot, like objectively mm-hmm. hot pics. Mm-hmm. And I got a million nice compliments. Thank you, people. But one person goes, oh, I just love how you show your confidence. I'm like, bitch, confidence where? I am serving hair. I am serving makeup. I am serving fashion. We're looking. We're looking. Why is the, and the word confident comes up because they're like, if I was as big as you, I would never post a pic. And it's like, that's your damage, baby. That has nothing to do with me. I am not involved. I I don't need to be involved in this. When you have that feeling, you look at a picture of a gorgeous fat person and you think I could never do that. What you do is you pick up the phone and you call your therapist exactly. and you have that conversation with her. I'm not in it. And by the way, that the, the 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 like the confidence piece of it is almost always somebody. It's almost always somebody who is uh, thinner, mm-hmm. and they'll be like, "Ugh." Like it comes from a place of being like, "Oh, if I was your size, I couldn't be that confident." And it's like you already aren't. Like the fact yeah. that you think that you're, the fact that you think gaining weight would put you in that place, honey, you're already in that place. I promise you. Live you live there. You have it's taken crazy. up residence in that place, and you're you trying to drag place. me in with you. <laughs> 
I was just I the I was just talking recently about like the experience I have where I if I say around certain thin people, not anyone I'm close with, but if I say around th- certain certain thin people like I am sexy, there's yeah, always some go, kind of they go like. They'll be like, they'll be like, they'll be like, oh, like confidence. Oh, but, so and it true. is important confidence to think that key. about yourself. Yeah. yeah, or like, and I'm like, no, I mean, yeah, yes, I guess also, but like, no, I'm literally sexy. They can't. They're so uh, addicted to the power that they get through proximity to thinness and beauty mm-hmm. that they can't imagine someone feeling like they have also been afforded that proximity. And it's like, no, it hasn't been afforded to me. I just know what I know. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And I think I remember I was on set one time and we were like eating lunch and um, it truly doesn't matter what I was eating, but it was like a salad with grilled chicken. Mm -hmm. And this girl was like, oh, you're so lucky. You can just eat whatever you want. And I was like, first of all, bitch, there's no food police. No one's coming to arrest you. You can eat whatever you want. You can eat whatever you want. We all can eat whatever we want. Yeah. But also, we are on set together. So I am so sorry that you are starving yourself or whatever it is you're doing that you don't feel like you can have lettuce and chicken. <laughs> like, And you ended up in the same show with someone who's allowed to have lettuce and chicken. Like, I get that that's tough. You're like, I, I did all this work and it turns out I didn't need to do it. But like, that's internal work for you to do. That has nothing to do with me. <laughs> Also, what is she eating? Like, <laughs> she's like lettuce and chicken is the splurge meal. That's like that's like, like when people are like counting almonds. Counting almonds is one of the craziest things. Yeah, <laughs> when people are like, I can have eight almonds. I'm like, Phew. you can have a hundred. Yes, almonds, you can. Have- I will say <laughs> they're almonds. Barack Obama became president eating seven almonds a night. So maybe we're doing it. R- if we want to be president, oh we should have God. only had seven almonds. Luckily, I think I'd be a really bad president. So. <laughs> <laughs> and In- I think I would be really good at it. Isn't that crazy? I do think yeah. I'd be really good we at it. It is crazy. Want to do it, but I certainly could. You would. You would kill yeah. it. You both. I would Shelby it. would also kill it. You just, Shelby, you don't know that, I guess. I don't know that. I think I, w- I would be really overwhelmed with uh, everything. <laughs> <laughs> I think it would be really overwhelming. Um, yeah, there's there's like a few keywords of compliment, like, yeah, backhanded compliments or even just like, I don't even know if they're, they are backhanded, I guess is true. But when it's like, you're brave, you're confident, you're like, any of those words that are like, because the nuance in that word is like, there's a reason not to be. There's a reason yeah. not to be confident. There's a reason not to be like, that that you had to be brave to, post something that and other people are, po- you know what I mean? There's such a weird. It's also always, it's also always a bitch who uh, it's like, why would I not be confident? I'm funnier, smarter, cooler, nicer than like even outside of looks. I'm like, it's always someone who anyone who would say some shit like that. It's someone who like really, Oh my God. I don't know. Thin, thin people who only bring thinness to the table and then want to like, it's someone with like a to t- me, like <laughs> I have a deprivation, honey, yeah. I'm, I'm beating you everywhere. I don't know what we're talking about. Yeah. It's always someone like, with like a beige sandscape Instagram feed. Please. You know what I mean? Fully. Because people who are living their best lives are not worried about you. You know, people who are actually like killing it in life are happy and killing it. They see the pic and they're like, good for you. Fire emoji. And they go on about the great day that they're having. Yeah. yeah. Cause they're having a great day. Yeah. That, that's, it. Oh my God. Okay. I fully, this is one of my, I have to say, this is one of my favorite deleted of all time. I'm so on board. Um, but Ashley, what, uh, you put, you put day drinking, day drinking. outside mm-hmm. and then what is your next item? Um, one of my other favorite human experiences is when a baby uses you as a couch, Fuck. you know, and a baby just like lays on you and they just drool <laughs> their spit on you because they don't, they're not like, they don't, they don't, they're not ashamed of anything. You're they're not like, human to them yet. Yeah. They're like, oh, <laughs> my friend's toddler came over the other day and we had never met me and this toddler. She walked in the door. First thing she did, wiped her nose on my jeans. She was Obsessed. like, my nose is running. Your jeans are here. And I love it. It's my favorite thing. <laughs> oh, I love that so much. And when the, specifically when, when a, a kid or like my little cousins are um, still like under eight. So they're still. Uh, it's kind of cute. Like anytime a baby or a kid lays like on your chest, I'm like, come here. Like I, it's so I feel so like I feel like I don't know. I I feel so like um kind of at peace. I'm like with just me and you, buddy. Whatever we're doing. Yeah, There's I love also, when they just like melt ahead, into you, and you know that they feel safe, oh. and you're like, I'm doing it. At least in this moment, I'm making this human being feel safe and comfortable. And like, what a better thing to be able to do. Yeah. I'm going to sob. I'm going to sob my oh, eyes. I'm going to cry. Ashley um, wants me to cry today. There's, 
I'm my addition to this is that works on its own as an independent. But something that also for me <laughs> is if a kid or a baby, you know, like toddler, whatever, doesn't like you right away. Like they seem a little bit tepid. They're sort of keeping their distance. And then they like come up to you and like want to hug or like they sit oh. on your lap or something. You've gained it. Like somehow you've earned it. <laughs> that is one of the best. Like I, I never feel as accomplished as I do when like some toddler is like, all right, now you are in with me. <laughs> Good work. Yes, fully. And I'm always like, don't worry, I'll get her. Like, yeah. when parents yes. are like, I have such a so sick sorry. confidence like, no, no. about it. Let her take her 10. I'll I, her. I play it cool. I play games. I'm like, no, you don't want to hang out with me. I don't want to hang out with you. That's fine. And then I earn, I earn it. <laughs> and it is a, it is a game. Well, and a game I'll Conversely, something I've had in the last couple of years, a really interesting time with is like, friends or relatives who are like older or just like very Missouri who are like maybe a little, I, I've had an issue with like people doing that thing where they're like conversely to being like, I'll wait when they're ready. It'll feel nice that they want, that they trust me with like older relatives or something being like forcing kids to give goodbye hugs and stuff at like gatherings where I'm like really trying not to be preachy, but also trying to be like, we really, really shouldn't do that. Like that there's really like, <laughs> you shouldn't force kids to like touch people or like, it's really difficult and I, I've never understood it because it makes the kid feel bad and then any normal adult should also not like that. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like, like, I don't want that. If the kid's like, okay, fine and like goes to give you a hug, it's not like you're like, this meant Yay, something. Yay, glad we <laughs> yeah, did that. Yeah, no, it's like, I'm glad we taught your kid to do whatever physically an adult tells them tells to them do. To. Right, I, I think that's awesome. awesome. Yeah, I'm like really against that. And I've had that awkward moment too, where you like try to tell the adult. So I feel like now what I try to do is tell the kid, it's your choice. You don't have to like directly to them. Like you're yeah. not an adult part of this conversation. Yeah. I am directly, <laughs> I guess as adults get to say, I am saying directly to you that you get to make your choice and like just kind of smooth over trying to have that conversation with the parent. Because yeah, I, I hate that. I hate that message to kids. Yeah, it's also I, awkward as hell being an outside adult being like, actually, with your kid. <laughs> like, yeah. I am right, but also, like, it is weird, you yeah. know? Me, someone in my 20s who, like, does jokes for a living, being like, actually, the way <laughs> actually, I think you should be raising this person human. is different than how you're doing it, <laughs> if that's okay. No. Kids. I love kids. Um, do you do you have, like, uh, nieces and nephews or, like, a lot of kids in your life, Ashley, or friends' kids? Yeah. Well, I always have, I've always been, I also, I used to be a teacher and I used to work in like an infant room. I've always like worked with a lot of kids, but now it's really weird. My family has gotten to the point where we don't have any more children in the family. So like my nieces Mm. and nephews are like 16 to 20, like there are no more children. And I'm looking around like, where are the kids? I realized like, oh, I was supposed to have them. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Oh, fuck. Oh, I forgot. (laughs) Oh my God, shit. I was supposed to have kids. (laughs) Something I was supposed to do. So it is, it's kind of like I know I'm forgetting something. Oh yeah, I was supposed to be a mother. (laughs) God damn it. I was supposed to be a mom by now. Yeah. Fuck. Okay. So yeah, we have no little kids in the family and I see how excited my mom gets when we see kids out or because she loves kids too. Oh, uh, but it's like, oh yeah, we we've fallen down on our <laughs> on our mark. <laughs> God, my mom also like family friends or like people I grew up with now that they have kids. That's one of the worst things because she'll be like, Wow, that's crazy because you guys used to talk about this to get God, <laughs> you should take you should heed that and put that like I'm always like, yeah, no, it's awesome that they had kids. <laughs> and I think that's cool. That's good, good, good for them. Good for them. <laughs> good for them. And also <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Well, that conversation, I, I don't I, I just for me, I that conversation is always super awkward of like with with older relatives or parents or whatever, of like when are you gonna have kids? Cause I'm like, I would fucking love to have kids. It's just not I can't do it right now. <laughs> Like, right now, I'm like, I, I, there's no, I, first of all, I don't have a partner. That's strange. Um, can't really believe it, but that is the situation. And second of all, like, just the lifestyle that we have, I'm like, I don't even know. I can't afford to buy a house in LA. Right what would now I do with I a have kid? A, right now, I have a cat and continuously say, I could not take care of a dog. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so if I can't take care of it, and if we are agreeing, my mom will be like, yeah, a dog would be really hard for you. So if we are in agreement that the dog thing is off limits, it's like, Kids. Well, the kid feels like a step above the dog. Let's get the dog. 
and then we could talk about kid. But she, yeah. I, it's con- it's cognitive dissonance. She's like, you could have a kid. A dog would be a lot, but a kid would be really good for you. <laughs> yeah. Whenever I see like another comedian or a TV writer like having a baby, and I'm like solidly in my thirties, I'm like, but how? Like, I just have so many basic <laughs> questions. Like. Right. How can you afford it? How much money do you have? Like, I just like w- want to sit every woman again in their thirties and forties <laughs> down and be like, "But how are you doing this?" What Magical did you make? Thing. What did yeah. you make last year that made this possible? Like, or like, yeah. like what, what kind of what kind of support system do you have that this? What happened? What's happening? How yeah. are you doing it? That's also so funny. seeing seeing someone that you know has a new baby like around. You're like, oh my god. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> like, what, how is that? <laughs> they just like went to sleep tonight or how'd you do this? <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, I would I would love that. But I think it, it definitely is. I do the same. Th- well, I have also, um, I guess actually this may not be true for you. I guess I don't know how it, it goes in L.A. But I have like friends or people I went to school with growing up who have like families, old ass kids. They have like they have, <laughs> they have like nine and ten year old kids, and I'm like, what? What? That's so it's so nuts to me, but that's how it is. Yeah, not as much because I grew up here, but yeah, definitely. And people all here married. know not to be that way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, and it's just expensive to live here. Right, you know, like right. if you can buy a house for six hundred thousand dollars, have as many kids as you want after you do that. You know, yeah, right. Um, <laughs> it's just not. Yeah, our if you look at the prices of houses in like suburban Cleveland, where I'm from, it's like. Yeah, I could have a family by now. Yeah, I could <laughs> have, have a, a big a family. family of houses. I could have a family and put them each I, in a different house. I could have income <laughs> properties. <laughs> Actually, I could be a landlord. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley, what's um what's next on your records? Um, I think it would be important to preserve kind of like the peak of humanity, like us at our best. And I think that that is a movie such as My Best Friend's Wedding, um, marry me, maid of honor. I think this is us representing as our us ourselves as a, at our best, and I think those things should be preserved. I really appreciate the my best friend's wedding of it all. My best friend's I, wedding is my favorite movie. Actually, I really have to say I'm having an out of body experience. I already knew I was such a fan of you. My best friend's wedding is. Like the best movie ever made. I'm so passionate about it. Also, also, I think for all of us, the Chicago aspect is like yes. uh, a little treat. But God, it's so – my best friend's wedding is so fucking good, dude. It stands the test of time. It's so good. And I'm always in writer's room. You know, it's always like predominantly men. And it's all – the men always talk about like Midnight Run or – you know, there are just like certain movies that are considered like good – writer movies or whatever mm. and I have more than once but most recently in the Ted Lasso room like taking the room hostage with shot by shot descriptions of my <laughs> best friend's wedding thank like, you for your service I salute you I'm like actually <laughs> it's great you know that the moment where they're on the like architectural tour please and they should he says, like, Kimmy says, if you love someone, you just say it. You say it right then. They go under a bridge. They pass into shadow or else the moment passes you by. And she missed her moment to say it. I was like, you can't tell me writing, directing, acting. Everything is playing together. <laughs> yes. It's a good movie. Oh, my God. It's, it's a so good. perfect movie. Yeah. Uh, and. What? <laughs> I just was thinking, Cameron Diaz, what have we lost? What have we lost Wait, with Cameron Diaz stepping what out of the, the light? What was the tweet that was so funny? I, I showed it to you. It was like someone talking about like a star. <laughs> like, I got it. It's not beneficial because I can't remember the tweet. <laughs> but it was something about how like a star loses like its lo- – <laughs> <laughs> it was like a scientific tweet about stars. It was like a it was star like, loses its luster when it's out of sight or something like that. And, and, like whatever, was like, and someone said, Cameron its Diaz. name is Cameron Diaz. <laughs> <laughs> we miss you, bitch. Oh, we yeah. love you. Come yeah, back. I, she, like, I watched The Holiday recently. Or something. Like, we she don't did need start a wine, wine company. We have plenty of wine, Cameron. We need you. We yeah. need you. We need the what you bring specifically. I was watching It's the Holiday, right? Where she goes to yeah. Ireland and... The, I watched that this winter and it's good. It's, it's a good movie. It's so it's good. good. I, I feel it's, like the, it makes no sense, by the way, that movie, because <laughs> I, looking at the difference in their two homes, I'm like, in what world? She's like, <laughs> she 
he's living this like incre- the the imbalance of this home swap is one of the craziest things I've ever heard. And they they dropped everything in a 24 hour period to switch homes. Crazy. What's Illogical. The Bad. Name? I would need to clean for a week. The Queen Latifah movie where she thinks she's dying and she goes yes. Last Holiday. Last, Last holiday. holiday. Incredible. Last holiday. A perfect film. Perfect. A perfect I, film. A Queen Latifah to me is Every movie she did for like 12 years was perfect. Like Queen Latifah was doing every single, like she was doing also so many different kinds of things, like doing Set It Off and then also doing Last Holiday. I'm like, what? I There's also a picture of her at the Emmys wearing an all brown leather suit that I am addicted to. Like I have it saved on my phone. Uh, yeah, Last Holiday is another one of those movies, very much like a lot of Cameron Diaz movies where it's like, you just, when you watch it, I think you just feel good. You're just like, this feels nice. Yeah, you're like, I want to watch her live her best life, eat everything. And, like, it's a rom-com, so you know she's not going to die at the end. But you're like, I want... I want to know how uh, she doesn't die. Yeah, a little Cool J, like, climbing a building to get to her. You're like, she deserves, she deserves it all. <laughs> she does deserve it all. And she also showed, it's also, there's, like, kind of a populist, like... <laughs> It's like it's like this like these rich people have nothing and she has it all because she has perspective. I was just like, <laughs> you watch it and you're like, yeah, I love I love this character. <laughs> uh, Ashley, what is what is uh, the next item on your records? Um. Oh, being a drunk girl in the bathroom is I think. Oh, I've heard one tales. of my favorite things. Like when you just <laughs> Kayla, like, log off. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, log off. This is me and Ashley time. It really There's is, because like, I've heard it's such a unique experience. Sorry, Ashley. It is, genuinely. It is. It's, like, the most solidarity you'll ever find. Like, if you are drunk in the bathroom, anything you need, if you discover, like, oh, I don't have a tampon, or, oh, I am in an abusive relationship, like, any need that you discover you have in that moment, the other women there are just going to be, like, complete stranger, let's get it together, and, like, let's rally, and it's just, like, it's such a good experience. There is a a true familial bond that literally ends the second you leave the bathroom. Yes. <laughs> like if you see a girl from the bathroom that you just talked through your family trauma with at the bar, you don't talk. It is a <laughs> – you know in the bathroom. You know each other in the bathroom and then you never talk again. Would you uh, both believe me if I told you nothing like that is happening in the men's room? Absolutely, yeah. No, I think almost. <laughs> would you would you go on this journey with me, where men are not being nice or interesting in the bathroom? I do think men's bathrooms need stalls um, because it's just it's so. I think it is like weirdly vulnerable to be like I'm just going to show my genitals to other people, and I think like men misbehave in the bathroom. I'm like, if there were just stalls and you didn't have to do that, maybe the whole experience would be better. Urinals also make. I'm happy to use a urinal, but they make no sense because if you put three more toilets where those urinals are, people could use it for both things. Like right. to put in this single use item just so people can have their uh, genitals out in front of each other, assuming that everybody using the men's bathroom has those genitals. It's like – it makes no sense. It's like completely bizarre. Yeah, it's just like who, who – what are we trying to prove here? R- like, well, what are what are we trying to prove? What are men trying to prove? That's a question we have to get to the bottom of and soon. Well, and there seems to be upkeep with a urinal that you don't have to do with a toilet. There's like the urinal cakes or like the um the ice when they put ice in them, it's like you don't gotta do that with the toilet. You flush it down, it goes away. Ugh, it God, goes away and ice. you don't have to deal with it. The ice is so gross. <laughs> the ice the ice makes it feel really um sinister to me i mean how telling very seedy and how telling is this though that ashley brought up like this beautiful ashley's like yeah i would put on the the record of humanity the way that women treat each other in the bathroom and like one of the first things we came to about men's bathrooms was sometimes you have to pee on ice like that like (laughs) that's such a like men are living such bad lives we're not well you gotta put your piss on ice better if they had a nice shay lounge in the bathroom truly and privacy (laughs) When I found out, it was, I I remember very vividly, I was a junior in high school when I found out, when I found out that a lot of women's bathrooms have couches, I was like. I wouldn't say a lot. I I would venture to say it's not even close to 30%. Sorry, I will say, I will say that at least there were some in our high school that did. Okay. And I was like. What? Yes. Not mine. 
You now I know you went to a better high school. <laughs> no, you wish. You I wish went to I was girls' school and our bathrooms were bare bones. Damn, I wish you were out when that happened. That would have been so cool for you. <laughs> I wish you were gay. To go to an all girls school and be a lesbian. Oh god, that would have been amazing, right? Just clean it up. <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't it be cool I would have killed to be like out and going to an all boys school yeah oh my god okay she, she doesn't care she um, doesn't agree. Um, in college we had only unisex bathrooms which were actually great like not a, they were always clean enough not a problem we would like well because I lived in the like theater dorm because <laughs> I was a nerd <laughs> yeah you did we would like plan our showers and be like, okay, we're listening to Rent in the shower today. And everyone would like shower at the same time and sing along to the music. And the bathroom was just like, it was great. It was a haven. And I was like, yeah, maybe if you don't leave men to their own devices. <laughs> you put women in, you put women in there to keep them in line. A rising yeah. tide. A, a rising tide <laughs> yes. of having women Raises present. Raises all ships. Raises yeah. all yeah. ships. Yeah. <laughs> God, that's so true. Um, Ashley, what, do you have uh, another item for your records? Uh, yes. I, this is the thing I think that humans are best at is adopting dogs, Ooh. which like human beings, like if you see another human living on the street, you're like, I bet he did something. I bet he's bad. But if a human sees a dog living on the street, they're like, please come move into my home. Sleep on my pillow, dog. <laughs> come on in. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> Lick my face. <laughs> with no your worries. Mouth. You, you, you look disgusting right now, but my God, but you won't be in my home and in yes. my bed. I saw someone adopted a dog on, on Twitter and they were like, um, this dog really smells, but I don't want to traumatize it by giving it a bath too soon. I was like, ma'am, wash the dog. Put the dog in water now. <laughs> Put the dog, get the dog in a little bit of water and get the dog in a little bit of soap even. Yeah. <laughs> Do a little bit of milk. Get Shampoo. Get butter. It'll be fine. Yeah. I will say, Ashley, I don't know if this uh, presses up against what you're saying. I... I really want to adopt a dog in the next year or two. I think it would be really fun. But I, I will say it has to be a little bit normal. Like I, I am I there people are adopting these dogs. I'm sorry. People are adopting dogs that have like they have they come with like the pill containers with the days listed on them. I'm like, I can't do it. It has to be able to like it does have to be able to walk. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's just too much. Because I'm already going to be like gone a lot. Caleb's, Caleb's ableist about dogs. No, I, it's, I, somebody should adopt them. But I'm like, I already know that I'm going to have to like, like uh, kennel it when I go out of town or like have like, I'm just like, it has to have both eyes, I think. Because I just don't. The I don't eyes? Know. Well, okay. Maybe it can have one eye, but it has to be good with it. Like, <laughs> I'm just saying, like, I think it has to be kind of normal. It is like a funny trend. I am I am all for adopting dogs. Please adopt a dog. But there is a funny thing where like, you know, everybody wants to be an influencer. Everybody wants to be famous. And everyone are, like, wants to have the to gnarliest do... dog possible. Yes. Like people are like <laughs> trying to do comedy. It's like comedy is too hard. If you just get kind of like a weird dog. Yeah. You're golden. A weird dog yeah. is 500,000 followers immediately. Minimal. Yeah. There is a weird culture of like, hey, this is a picture of my dog who's eyes are sewn shut and has a tongue that is permanently uh, touching the floor because yeah. I can't keep it inside. And I love this little guy. Never <laughs> has like, normal fur. It never has normal fur. The fur is always, I'm sorry to say, the fur is always very strange. <laughs> it's like patchy. It's like has, look, and I'm fine. I'm just, and there actually was, and I, I can't believe now Shelby's done this once on the pod today, today and now I have. There's a tweet that I can't remember exactly, but it's, um, <laughs> it's like somebody, Somebody just tweeted, like, the bond between an extremely hot girl in L.A. and her decrepit, disgusting, yes. fucked up dog. <laughs> like, yes. Hot girls have the ugliest fucking dogs I've ever seen in L.A. It's so true. And, like, sometimes barely making it. And it's like, maybe your dog shouldn't be at this cafe. It seems like it's having a hard time. It doesn't need to be at Erewhon. Maybe we leave it at home because it can't yeah. walk. You know, like girls, you're... <laughs> girls that comment on posts, this is so brave. Are the girls with the fucked yes. up ugly dog? <laughs> yes, truly. They think like, their dog is brave. They're and they're like, like yeah. this dog, dog is confident. This dog My is confident. This dog is, is brave confident. And confident, and she's going. This dog to is Erwan. confident. Yeah. <laughs> That being said, my dog did have her first photo shoot today, so I'm not Ooh. above it. But she doesn't have to be above it. We're not asking you to be above it. She's normal. <laughs> She's normal. We kept it normal with her. Uh, <laughs> Ashley, we have come to the end of our time, but is there uh, anything that you want to tell people about where they can find you, et cetera? Oh, I mean, I'm 
I was going to say I'm in these streets, but I'm not. I don't know why. I look at that set. I'm in this house. <laughs> yeah, I'm in this house. Uh. That's where you can find me. Let me set expectations realistically. Um, yeah, I'm on Instagram, on Twitter. Check out a Black Lady Sketch Show on HBO Max. It's so mm-hmm. good. It's so good. You guys it's do so, actually have so to check good. it out. God, if you haven't already, I have to actually ask you what's going on. <laughs> it's a fun time. I can at least guarantee you three hours of fun. <laughs> It's so good. Ashley, we genuinely were such such huge fans and we're so thank you so much for doing this. This is Thanks. this is an all-time great episode. We salute. <laughs> yeah, don't come for me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> don't ever come for Ashley. That's the one thing I would say. <laughs> to right. end a podcast guys, by going. So and fun. also, you can and find also, me here but do don't not come, for, come me. for me. Do not come. For, you can find me there. Don't come for me or call me confident. Confident. <laughs> oh my god, don't call me confident. All right, Ashley, thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Bye. That was a HeadGum Original.